hikes, dance parties on the beach. We've been going camping on the weekends. That doesn't cost very much. And of course, let's not forget that. Let's not forget quality control. Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, former professional movie watcher and content consultant in Los Angeles, bringing you lessons for YouTube creators, helping you make better content and you a better creator. Trying something new. Uh, to have a video called Money Diaries, increasing my expenses by 91%. Wow. Moving to LA. Hey, that's where I live. It is a very expensive city. Uh, when I moved here in 2014, a burrito uh, at the burrito truck, $5. You know how much it is now? 12 flipping dollars i told i told them no gracias senor i'm gonna go to ralph's get a five dollar burrito heat it up myself get a bag of chips and a soda it's like nine dollars it's much better <laughs> so no no my that's how i cut my expenses by like 20 percent <laughs> in los angeles going to ralph's uh this is from a channel called rose han 840,000 subscribers that's close to a million and this video has 16,000 views at the time of this recording. I'm a little familiar with Rose. Uh, I have a friend who has been in school to be an accountant um, for it feels like forever. I don't know if he's taken one class at a time. So he would send me these videos and some of his other friends, a Rose Han video over the past few years, um, trying to get us interested in finance. Um, watched them. They thought they were informational. Um, I guess she's what's considered a fin influencer, a financial influencer, fin influencer, is what they call them. Um, but over the weekend, while the markets were crashing, and I think they still are, uh, he sent me this video, and he's like, "I'm done with Rose. I'm done. I'm not. I'm not going to subscribe. I'm not going to watch anymore." Audiences are fickle. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> Everybody knows is right. Uh, he's, he's done with her, and gave me a whole laundry list of reasons. Uh, and he, he's like, "Watch this video," and so I watched it, and. Um, I won't go into the reasons why he's not going to stop watching, but, uh, I watched his video and I, I was like, oh, okay, well, this is an opportunity. I, I see an opportunity to teach a lesson. That's an important lesson, uh, especially for you content creators. that watch my channel and are trying to get to that next level. If you've been doing this for a while, have a pretty big audience and you just really feel like you want to go to the next level. There are some things that you need. There's one big thing. It's going to be the lesson today that you need to do. And, uh, today's lesson is do you keep your people in check? Do you keep your people in check, right? Um, so in this video, Rose talks about why she moved, she moved from Mexico City to uh, Los Angeles um, because she went to a, an in-person mastermind with a bunch of creators in Malibu, and she just felt that, you know, she wanted to take her career to the next level, her content creation career. I mean, she's got close to a million subscribers. So that's really great. She's doing something right. And she wanted to, you know, supercharge it, and she just felt that, um Los Angeles was the place to be because um, a lot of creative people here. There's a lot of creative energy. It's just access to creativity here as, as opposed to a place like Mexico City or I don't know, like any pick any Midwestern American town. Um, and she's right. And I'm, I'm supportive of that. Hey, if you want to take your content creation career to the next level, follow your dreams and, and, and keep doing it. Uh, content creation is not easy. I say, I say that on the channel all the time. Like, Creating content, one of the hardest things to do in the world. Um, so if you have a passion for it, you want to continue it, uh, do that, right? As you grow, you're going to have to start probably relying on other people to help you create your content. Nothing wrong with that. It's not a secret. Every, a lot of the big channels do it. Um, but you need to have an apparatus to keep your vendors in check. Now, when I say that I was a former professional movie watcher, <laughs> I don't mean that I was a movie critic um, or anything. I, I actually watched movies 40 hours a week for seven years. Um, I worked for the biggest post-production house in Hollywood and I worked in theatrical distribution. So that meant that all of the um, studios would give us their movies, sometimes months ahead. I saw a lot of big movies before, months before the world, the rest of you. Um, and we would make the DCPs and we would, they would give us the assets to put everything together from a lot of different vendors all over the world, VFX and audio houses and, you know, uh, everywhere. It takes a lot of people to make a movie. They give us all the assets. We would make the DCP and then we'd watch them internally. We'd approve them or not approve them. And then we'd give them to the client. They'd approve them or not approve them and then send it out into the world, into theaters all around the world. Um, so one of the reasons the studios did quality control was because they wanted to give number one they wanted to give like the highest 
integ- and they wanted to give like the most integrity, <laughs> the, the highest quality product to the audience, right? Because they knew the audience was paying for it in movie theaters. And number two, it was to keep their vendors in check, right? Because they, they relied on a lot of different vendors. They wanted to make sure that if the subtitling company was doing subtitles, if the, um, the sound mixing company was doing the sound mix, the dubbing company was doing the dubbing, um, the special effects company was providing the special effects. They wanted to make sure that every, everybody was delivering a high quality product because they were paying for it, right? That's why they did quality control. So you may find yourself doing that. And I'm not sure, I'm not 100% certain, um, but I would, I imagine, just given Rose's resources and like it seems like she's got a lot of other things to do during the day, I would imagine that she probably hires an editor to edit her, uh, her stuff here. Um, and mistakes happen. They, they just do, you know, they, they might happen and it's fine. Like, um, everybody makes mistakes. We're all humans. AI isn't editing things for us yet. <laughs> but one of the things that your editor has full control over is watching their own work, right? So if you're hiring an editor and they do something like this, and they give it to you and be like, all right, we're all set, good to go. And you see this, you can know for 99% certainty, with 99% certainty that they didn't watch this. They didn't watch the video before they sent it to you. And that is egregious and almost inexcusable. An editor needs to watch their effing content. They need to watch their work before giving it to you right? They have to. If they do it once and there's a mistake like this, okay, there's a mistake. Maybe go back and redo it. Um, if it happens twice, you need to find a different editor, right? Y- you just do, or a different vendor or whoever's doing this work for you. Um, you, need, you need to watch, you, you need to make sure they're watching their own work. Um, but what else this kind of signals is that maybe that Rose didn't even watch her own work, right? So Rose got the video, just uh, just maybe trusted that the editor, just never trust your editor. Trust, what do they say in journalism? Trust but verify, <laughs> right? Um, I, you know, I can't be, maybe even Rose missed it. Maybe she watched it and just missed it, um, which, which could happen, you know, it happens. Um, but if you're too busy to watch your own content and your editor just doesn't watch your own work back, you need to hire somebody, either a producer or like just a specifically a quality control person with a, objective eyes and ears on it. Because I, I understand sometimes you, you, you're, you're looking at your own work and it's hard. You get blind spots. You, you, can't, you can't really see things anymore. That happens. Um, so that's why you maybe want to bring in somebody subjective, doesn't know anything about the content and just going to watch it to make sure there's no errors in it before you hand it out to your, to your subscribers and before you publish it. Because what this could do is it could, it could communicate to the audience that you don't care when maybe that wasn't even the case. Maybe you just missed it, but this has the potential of, of telling your audience, Hey, like, I don't, I don't care and I respect you. That's how some audience people will take it. Some people just won't care. Some people will be like, oh, well, you know, I like seeing your face twice. I, you know, I don't mind. You know, double the rows, double the fun in the video, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but some people are going to see it that way. Audiences are very smart these days. They're very savvy. Uh, so you need, if you're going to go to the next level in your content creation journey, you need to start getting the perspective of what it's like to watch your content. For the, from the audience's point of view. And if you need someone to help you do that, that's why I exist. I help content creators think from that perspective. Uh, and I also do call it quality control for uh, some clients as well to, to give it one last look, to be like, okay, everything's fine. Or you might want to go back and fix this before we publish it. Because what does your editor care? That's not the editor's face. That's your face. You're the creator. This is you, right? Um, you're the one looking like you don't care. Like you're looking like you made the error, not your editor. 
So think about that. That's the lesson for today. Um, keep your people in check. You need, you, need, you need a safety net. You need an apparatus in order to do that. Okay? So uh, I will subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. As long as you do both of those things for me on my way to 100, 100 I wish 100,000 subscribers, 100 subscribers. Uh, I don't know if I wish for 100,000 subscribers. I, I like where I am right now. Uh, I know that everybody's a real one, subscribes and watches, uh, looks quality. You're all real ones. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, you're down for it. I remember that nobody used to watch this channel. So even when I get a mean comment, I'm like, hey, I remember when nobody left any comment at all. <laughs> don't leave me comments. I'm still a human. <laughs> Anyways, all right, everybody, keep creating.